Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Fighting back, we are following breaking news this morning after a woman finds a suspected thief targeting her vehicle outside of her home and she opens fire. Good Friday morning to you. I'm Evron Cassidy. We're going to get to your forecast in just a moment as we head into the weekend. But first, we do want to update you on this breaking news that's happening right now on Coyle near Finkel and Greenfield. Local Force Nick Monticelli is there on the scene for us live this morning. Nick, uh, break this all down and tell us exactly what happened. Everyone, good morning to you. This is happening in the 14,000 block of Coil on Detroit's west side. I'm going to step out of the way so photographer Josh can kind of give it lay of land here. You see that DPD cruiser that is parked blocking traffic right there. So in between these vehicles, the SUV right there, which I believe is a Suburban, the uh, I think it's like a silver or a beige color. I can't tell without a whole lot of light on it. That is the vehicle that was the target that was going to be stolen until this whole thing was broken up. In fact, Josh, if you wouldn't mind panning down or tilting down, you can see there's now an evidence marker on the bottom or on the, uh, the drive there right next to that vehicle probably marking at least one shell casing because this is a shooting. All this happening two hours ago at about 2.25 in the morning. In fact, we can show you some video from earlier in this morning. What happened was the 61-year-old who lives in the home right in front or right next to this car heard something outside. I'm not sure why she was awake at 2.30. Maybe it woke her up. She walked outside to see what was going on, found this would-be thief inside the car. She went over to confront him. According to DPD, there was a struggle, and that is when she shot him. So he is a 49-year-old man. He is listed in temporary serious conditions, so he is likely going to be okay. She is okay as well. Uh, she has been taken down to the station to talk more about what happened. One of the uh, snafus in this, though, is that she is not a CPL holder. So the fact that she had that gun might become problematic for her just in uh, general terms of this case. Now, back out here live again, uh, she is going down for questioning. The would-be thief in this case, the suspect, is in the hospital in temporary serious condition. And we are working to try to get more details on exactly, <coughs> pardon me, what else happened out here, why she was awakened, and what uh, happened with that struggle where it went from a struggle to where she thought she had to shoot the guy. Obviously, she, her, her life was threatened. She felt that way and used that gun. We're hoping to get some more of those details. We're live here on the west side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. A lot of questions about this one, Nick. Uh, we'll let you talk to investigators. We'll check in with Nick again at the top of the hour. Right now it's 431. Uh, come close to your TV screen, everybody. We got a lot to talk about in the weather department. You saw it was raining there where Nick is and likely uh, a lot of Metro Detroit. Uh, Paul experiencing the same thing and then there's the look ahead. Yeah, now yeah, let's talk about right now and then we'll talk about the weekend snow coming up in about 10 minutes, but uh, Right now, it is a miserable morning out there. Temps are in the 40s. Okay, that's not brutally cold, but when you factor in the fact that it is a steady rain coming down, these numbers from 45 to 48 degrees are pretty chilly. Now, here is the rain, and as you can see, you can literally see low pressure sliding up here just to our east. So while this moisture comes north, you can see a back edge is trying to work its way eastward. In fact, western Livingston County into Ingham County starting to see this rain end, but it's going to be a very slow process, and we're going to have it for the next Next few hours. So what we're going to have is we're going to have the rain that'll taper to showers by noon. We're going to then get a bit of a dry spell, but then late afternoon we could actually see some scattered showers, maybe even a, a thunderstorm pop up with a high around 60, 62 degrees. And the other factor, it's going to be a windy day with uh, wind gusts that could approach uh, 35, 40 miles per hour. So we'll be back to talk about again that weekend snow coming up in just a bit. Everett. Alrighty, Paul will be checking in with you shortly. Right now, though, police are searching for some teens accused of egging a Tesla. The teens responsible for the vandalism might not be aware that the Tesla that they targeted was actually recording the entire incident. This happened at a mire over in Ann Arbor. The video shows four people pull up in a Cadillac SUV like you can see there, and then they pull out uh, a carton of eggs and start hitting the car with those eggs. The vehicle's owner says the paint was damaged and it will cost about $800 just to fix it. Police say this might not be the first Tesla targeted at that mire, and right now there's an investigation underway. Well, in a decision that impacts many Michigan voters, a federal court says the state must redraw congressional and legislative maps. A three judge panel ruled the maps drawn by Republicans in 2011 violates Democratic voters constitutional rights by diluting the weight of their votes. The court ordered the state legislature to redraw at least 34 of the state's 162 districts. 
The decision also requires special state Senate elections to be held in 2020 instead of 2022. That will cut the terms of some lawmakers in half. Republicans are promising to appeal the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, two amazing rescues were caught on camera in Metro Detroit. One was in Sterling Heights. The other one was on Detroit's east side. Let's break these all down for you. Where an off-duty officer, a firefighter rather, rushed in to save a man from this burning home. And take a look at just how intense these flames are. And yes, that is a car in the middle of those homes. This is cell phone video that shows Amara Dabney ignored the intense flames and run right into that house on Waveney and Kaju Thursday morning. Dabney was driving by with her son and he stopped when he saw the smoke and the flames and without any gear on, he pulled a man to safety. There's no word yet on how that fire started. And it was police officers in Sterling Heights that are responsible for this next dramatic rescue when a suspected drunk driver crashed their vehicle. Hey man, look away. We're going to bust the window out, okay? And you got to get out of the car. Can you open that door? Your car is on fire. Come on. Pretty scary moments there as well. The driver was unconscious as the flames in that vehicle spread. Earlier this month, this was at 17 and DeQuinter. Police couldn't bust the windows out, but eventually they were able to pry that door open, pull the driver out, but then that driver was arrested. We have new information now about this semi crash that happened in Macomb Township that leveled this house. We've now learned up to five vehicles were also damaged when that truck blew a tire and the driver lost control right at 26 mile near Omo Road. And again, thankfully, no one was seriously hurt, but crews have since returned to clean up all of the debris there. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office says that no charges will be filed. And a Southfield massage therapist is suspended for allegedly sexually assaulting his clients. The Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, also known as LARA, uh, announced the Thursday suspension of Carl Ellis's massage license. That means that Ellis can't practice massage therapy until it's determined if he did or did not break Michigan's public health code. The suspension comes after two of Ellis's clients came forward to report allegations against him. Well, scammers in Virginia now are trying to take advantage of grandparents right here in Metro Detroit. An 81 year old grandmother from Macomb County almost lost all of her cash. That is nearly $10,000 that you're looking at there. A man posing as an attorney called her and told her that he needed it to bond her grandson out of jail. Well, she sent the money to an address near Richmond, Virginia, but thanks to a tip from the Utica Police Department, officers were able to find the package before it got into the wrong hands. It is 436 now on your finally Friday and coming up, we're talking about this wedding venue controversy. A local bride has it all the ring, the flower and the cake. But will she have her wedding? We'll tell you why she might have to find a new venue that's coming up. But first, Paul is tracking the weekend forecast, alluding to some white stuff falling from the sky. Uh, yeah, and we're not talking flurry, so we're going to break that down for you. And also, we got to get this rain out of here, so we'll talk about that. And again, we're going to talk about that weekend snow straight ahead. Hi, this is Bernie Smallitz. Lion fans are ecstatic. They got the tight end they wanted. We'll tell you all about them coming up. It's warehouse. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 452 and it's also Friday. That means that we are giving away something free as we do every Friday right here on Local 4 News today. You can now enter to win a $100 gift card to Rockies of Northville. To enter or for the complete contest rules, just head on over to the contest page of clickondetroit.com. Good luck to you. Well, the winning streak for James Holzhauer on Jeopardy continues. He has now won more than $1.2 million during his 16 show run. There is a local woman, though, that's among those who have suffered the sting of defeat against him. And she told our very own Paula Tupman what makes him so tough and how his winning streak might end. So here's the thing about Jeopardy. It's actually shot months in advance. And so Ann Arbor's Rebecca McNitt had no idea she was going up against the guy they call Juggernaut James. He is a phenom who is absolutely sweeping the game. She didn't realize it until she met him in a holding room. And then when she got a chance to play against him, she observed him very closely and says she thinks she knows why he plays so well. The name Ken Jennings is iconic when you talk about Jeopardy success stories, winning 74 games in 2004 and winning two and a half million dollars. But consider this current reigning money champion is James Holzauer, a professional sports gambler from Las Vegas, Nevada. 
who's already won half of what Jennings won in a fraction of the time. As winnings total $1,061,554. When Rebecca McNitt played against him, she says she figured out the magic, a quinfecta of talent that include he is a very good player. He's very smart. He is fast on that buzzer. I knew a lot of the questions that were up on the board, but I was ringing in and being beaten on many of the questions. He is lucky, getting lots of daily doubles. And so there he is, the daily double. And then having the guts, courage, and cojones to bet big. The house limit, please. All right. And the fifth element is his strategy of going big early in the game with seemingly no fear of going home. Oh, you're making that big a bet. So what could possibly knock him out? One answer, one wrong question, one big bet, and time. What are the odds? If any of those things is off, there's always the possibility that someone could beat him. And of course you know where you can find Jeopardy, right? Right here on Local 4. How will he do tonight? Watch and see. Paula Tupman, Local 4. Well, we are certainly going to be watching and seeing. James is going for his 17th win tonight. As Paula mentioned, you can watch Jeopardy right here, 730 here on Local 4. Right now it's 455. And coming up next right here on Local 4 News today, stories for you out of Dearborn, Detroit, and Inkster. Plus, we've got a good health special report. A local hospital system is trying to reduce the risk of opioid addiction and help patients battling chronic pain. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Ahead, see how you can help fight the opioid crisis and learn about options to ease pain in a safer way. Well, rain, rain, go away. Uh, yeah, it'll eventually go away, but then we have uh, rain coming back in for part of the weekend, and then there's snow that's going to be part of that equation. We will talk about that straight ahead. Uh. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5 starts now. We are following breaking news this morning from Detroit's west side, where a woman has a close encounter with a would-be carjacker, she opens fire on that suspect. We are live from the scene there with the very latest. And it was a big night in the NFL for the annual draft, and we will introduce you to our newest Detroit Lion, Paul. And I am rocking the Lions tie today because of that. I thought it was a good pick. Hey, we have rain in the area now, but for the weekend, it's uh, more than just rain that we're looking at. We're talking snowflakes. So I'll have that forecast straight ahead. Nobody wants to talk snowflakes on the Absolutely 26th not. day of April. <laughs> no, our executive producer, Matt, posted uh, the link from Click On, the weather page. Yes. Talking about snow. That's where I first heard about it. And I mm -hmm. commented in one word, lies. <laughs> because I don't believe it, even though we do have professional meteorologists yes. all gross on the case. We may want to just hibernate on Saturday <laughs> so we don't see it. <laughs> there you go. It, a lot of it's going to come in overnight Saturday. We might actually salvage part of the day Saturday. But uh, right now, it's pretty dreary outside. You can see the clouds hanging. I mean, the, the clouds are basically down to the tops of our skyscrapers here downtown. 48 at Metro. Many of us are in that 46, 47, 48 degree range. North Northwest wind at 10 miles per hour. That's going to pick up today. It's going to become a real windy day. And look at how low the pressure is. 29.42 inches and there's all the rain and all its glory. So it's going to be a while before we can really get this stuff to pivot out of here. But once it does and the sun pops out this afternoon, we may pop up a few scattered late afternoon showers, maybe even a couple of thunderstorms and the high temperature around 60, maybe 62 degrees in the warmest spots. I'll be back in just two minutes to talk about that weekend snow. Everod. All right. Yeah, you'll definitely want to keep it tuned right here to local four. Miss a day, miss a lot. And we're definitely going to keep our eyes on that snow. Paul, thank you. We are following an accident, though, in four life traffic. It's on I-75, the northbound side, just past the Davison. The right lane is blocked because of this, but you see all green on your map there, so it's not really affecting traffic much right now. And we continue to follow this breaking news from Detroit's west side, where a suspected car thief has been shot. This all unfolded on Coyle Street. This is the area of Greenfield and Finkel on Detroit's west side. Nick Monticelli is there live for us this morning to talk us through what we know so far about what happened here. 
Yeah, Ron, a good morning to you. So all this happened at about 225 this morning and the SUV you can kind of see there in between the other two cars. It's uh, like a suburban, a silver suburban. That's the SUV in the middle of all this. A woman, 61 years old, living inside of the home just to the right of it, heard noises. So she went outside and found a guy trying to steal her car. Now take a look at this video again happening about 2 30 this morning. So once she got out here, she yelled, the fight ensued after that. I'm not sure how long that struggle was until the point where she pulled out a gun and shot this guy. He is a 49 year old, the suspect who would have been the thief in this case. He is now listed in temporary serious condition at the hospital. I am not sure if he is expected to survive at this point, but normally a temporary serious condition means that you are going to be okay, but that has changed in some other instances. The 60, 61 year old woman who pulled the trigger who lives here, the only problem for her is that she is not a licensed CPL holder. So that might become a problem a little here on down the road. She is currently at the uh, police station uh, just for questioning as of this point, not under arrest for any reason. But again, that CPL uh, might become an issue. So back out here live again, it all centers around that suburban out there. The crime scene folks are still on scene. They were kind of walking around, gathering evidence, taking photos. The problem though, this rain is really hampering a lot of things and starting to move things around. So they're trying to move as quick as they can. They've been taking breaks and trying to get in and out and look for shell casings on the ground there. That's what we have right now. I just saw a detective pull up as well, just in case the uh, suspect does pass away and they have to have this as a homicide. They want to have all those things taken care of just in case. We're live here on the West Side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All righty, Nick, thank you for the update there. Meanwhile, let's get the very latest out of Sri Lanka. Authorities there are saying the suspected leader of the Easter Sunday attacks died in the Shangri-La hotel bombing. Police say that Mohammed Zahran, the leader of the militant group, was killed in one of the nine suicide bombings. Raids and arrests have been made following those series of blasts. A spokesperson says that 58 people in total have been arrested. The death toll was also lowered to 253 people that lost their lives. The ministry says that the explosions damaged the bodies of the dead so much that it made it difficult to identify those who were killed. In a decision that impacts many Michigan voters, a federal court says that the state must redraw congressional legislative maps. A three judge panel ruled that the maps drawn by Republicans in 2011 violate Democratic voters constitutional rights by diluting the weight of their votes. The court ordered the state legislature to redraw at least 34 of the state's 162 districts. The decision also requires special state Senate elections to be held in 2020. These elections were to be held in 2022. It's two years earlier. It will be next year. That will cut the terms of some lawmakers in office right now in half, potentially. Republicans are pr promising to appeal the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un uh, held his first face-to-face -face talk with Russian President Vladimir Putin. And the two leaders met on Thursday, pledging to boast ties and diffuse tension. This was just two months after President Donald Trump's second denuclearization summit breakdown. President Trump walked away, saying Kim demanded the lifting of all sanctions. Putin now says North Korea would be ready to denuclearize if given security guarantees. And police need your help this morning searching for a missing team. Shayana Anderson was last seen early Monday in the 20,000 block of Terrell Avenue. She's described as a 16 year old black female. She stands at about five feet tall and weighs just about 100 pounds. You can see she's got long black hair there as well as brown eyes. If you know where she could be, please give police a call. An amazing rescue caught on camera as an off duty firefighter was in the right place at the right time and rushes right into this house to save a man from his burning home on Detroit's east side. Cell phone video shows Amari Dabney ignore the intense flames and run into a house on Waveney and Kaju on Thursday morning. Dabney was driving by with his son and stopped when he saw the smoke initially without any gear on. He walked in and he pulled the man out to safety. No word yet though on how the fire started, but we do know it started with that vehicle that was in the driveway, but one of those homes was completely destroyed. An update now this morning on this semi crash in Macomb Township that plowed right through a house, destroying it. Yeah, completely leveled it. We've now learned about five vehicles. Up to five vehicles were also damaged when that truck blew a tire and the driver lost control right at 26 mile near Omo Road. 
No one was seriously hurt, and crews now have returned to clean up all the debris. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office says that no charges will be filed. It is 506 on your finally Friday morning, and still to come is a plant-based diet for you. We'll tell you what experts say it can do for your health. And speaking of health, the measles crisis has now reached all the way over to the West Coast. What officials are doing to stop the spread of this contagious disease. Happy birthday to you for celebrating today on this 26th day of April. A happy birthday going out to Ari Nixon, who's turning one today. Ariel Flowers is three. Nevea Glenn, three as well. Paige Hollis is six. Destiny Gardner is turning 12. And a happy 12th birthday also to Nathan Jackson. Also celebrating today, Precious Howard is 18, Riley Reagan 21, Mary Scott, happy 25th birthday to you, Chris Moss turning 26 today, and a happy birthday to David Wolfgang, 29, and Diana Williams, 29 today as well. Nicholas Borsier is turning 30 today, Douglas Cook is 35, Ron Davis is 38, Michael Minor, happy 40th birthday to you. Yolanda Tapscott is 44, and Damon Jackson is 47. Also celebrating today, Quanda Clay, the big 5-0 today. Happy birthday. Brian Filizov is 51. Michelle Pegues, happy 51st birthday to you as well. Tammy Peraza, happy 53rd birthday. And a happy birthday also going out to Lawrence Gowdy, turning 57. Darlene Shaner, happy 58th birthday to you. Patricia Smith is turning 65 today. Man, this is a long list. Patty Pettyman is 68. Alice Pitts is 86 today. Ilma Wingo, happy 87th birthday to you. And Jim Holden is turning 90. Wow. And happy birthdays are also going out to Betty Chapel, Chris Davis, Shamanda Dutton, and Terrence Hayes. Happy birthday also going out to Keith Stringer, Yvonne Williams, and last but certainly not least in the birthday category, Arthur Wilson celebrating today. I think we covered at least a quarter of Metro Detroit. <laughs> Indeed, but we do want to get to our anniversaries. Happy anniversary going out to John and Diane Tandy celebrating 39 years together. Wayne and Jane, Jan, Wayne and Jan Davidson celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary. Morris and Dorothy Richards celebrating their golden anniversary. 50 years together, congratulations. Wow. And take a look at your screen here. Happy anniversary to our 5 a.m. producer, Greg Robinson and his beautiful bride, Jackie Robinson. They're celebrating 33 years together. Congratulations. Congratulations indeed. And happy anniversary to happy both. Happy anniversary. Of That's my favorite. All right, welcome back, everybody. A quarantine is in place at two Los Angeles universities after more than 200 students and staff might have been exposed to measles. Now, the order has been issued in connection with the University of California and Cal State University. Officials say a UCLA student diagnosed with measles possibly exposed 500 people on campus to measles in early April. This comes as the number of measles cases nationwide hits a 25 year high. Well, this will upset you. The search now continues for this group of teenagers that were caught on camera egging a vehicle in an arbor at a Meyer store while the family was in the car. Well, this was a <laughs> Tesla at that. These are actually images directly from Darren Lee's car. Four guys, you see them, they're in a Cadillac SUV. They pull up and they start whipping eggs at Lee's Tesla. Once they noticed that Lee was still in the car, they took off. I think they were going to cover my car with like all five dozen eggs and they saw me and you know they took off real quick. Well, after washing his car, Lee noticed that the egging had left scratches all over the front grill of his car. So this is not just your mm. uh, friendly prank. It's going to cost him about 800 bucks to fix and Lee hopes that somebody recognizes these teens so that they can take responsibility for the damage that's done to his car. I think someone will recognize those teens, especially their parents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's some pretty good video um, to show them. Yeah, I was wondering, though, about how he had video like our yeah. Tesla is so cool yes, that they they are. So that car was recording it was wow. recording what was going on in front of it you impressive know. I, I guess no we all need to buy a tesla same thing. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's crazy all right so crazy. last night on my way home i hosted an event for vista maria in dearborn pouring rain everybody was leaving the event were and then i woke up this morning i thought 
is still raining? It's still pouring rain. <laughs> That's when you know you've had a lot of water and it's time to just turn the faucet off. Yeah, and, and there's some uh, puddling and ponding on some of the, uh, you know, the freeways and uh, the curb lanes and things like that. So do be careful when you're, uh, when you're out and about this morning, especially at those high speeds on the freeways. But right now, uh, we're in the 40s in most areas. And uh, look at this now, Adrian, you've just bumped up to 52 degrees. But the other thing we're watching is the wind. Right now, not too bad, but the wind is going to pick up today. And in fact, the western half of the lower peninsula that includes Ingham County, by the way, is under a wind advisory. So we here could see gusts 35 to maybe even 40 miles per hour before it's all said and done. All right, here's the big picture. Here's our big storm over us now. We'll zoom in on that in a minute. And it's it doesn't look like much, but this is our next storm that's coming in over the weekend. But let's uh, let's talk about right now first. And you can you can actually see the spiral. You see the low pressure passing to our east. So here's the rain shield to the west. And this right here is in a kind of a diminishing phase, which was actually handled pretty well by the computer model. So here we are with the low again pushing to the northeast, and that will eventually end our rain. Now we're going to see the sun eventually come out this afternoon. But then a few scattered little showers, maybe even a scattered thunderstorm could kind of randomly pop up by late afternoon. More of us will not see one than will, but it's something that we do need to keep an eye on. All right, Saturday morning, we wake up to some sunshine, but then we watch this. <laughs> We're going to be dry. Most of us are dry through the afternoon. Then as we get into the late afternoon, maybe toward Lenaway County, late afternoon, we get a raindrop. But uh, for the rest of us, rain develops Saturday, Saturday evening, changes to, no, to snow overnight Saturday night. So we wake up Sunday morning to this, and then we actually get some sunshine by Sunday afternoon. And then we have to watch that coming in for Monday afternoon that we just have this active pattern right now. Now, if it were to stick, if, if, if it were to stick, this would be a one to three inch snowfall, but the road temperature is above freezing and the, the air temperature will be as well. Maybe you get a little thin layer of slush on the roads, but overall, it, it, like a deck, patio furniture, a mailbox, your car parked outside Sunday morning, you could have a one to three inch accumulation of snow on it. Probably more like a couple because it's, it's such a wet snow, it'll compact. Anyhow, today, 62 degrees. The rain this morning, we then get some breaks of sun, but a pop-up shower or storm possible late in the afternoon. And then we already talked about Saturday. The whole weekend, we're in the low 50s for highs. That's pretty rough. But then Monday, the next chance of rain comes in. We get a break Tuesday, but then it gets unsettled Wednesday through Friday. But tentatively, tentatively, next weekend is looking dry with some sunshine. Everod? All right, Paul, uh, that no snow guarantee is still in effect. So if it does accumulate, oh, he says Brandon is back on Monday, so it's not it's not him. Ha! Throwing him under the bus. Oh, man, let's take a look at Fort Life traffic right now. That accident that we were telling about on 75 right at the Davidson is cleared. It wasn't affecting traffic anyway, and neither is this one. It's on I-94 right on the eastbound side past Michigan Avenue. One left lane is blocked, but you can see all green on the maps there, so it's not really affecting traffic much there either. We'll let you know if any accidents pop up that'll slow down your morning commute in just a little bit. In the meantime, let's get an update on sports. IKEA. All right, it's been raining all night and it's still raining right now. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 40s in most areas. We have a couple of low 50s around. Now the rain will start tapering off by late morning and by early afternoon, hopefully some sunshine a little bit builds in, but then a scattered shower or a thunderstorm. Uh, most of us not getting it, but could pop up late afternoon. High temperature, a windy 62. Everod? Okay, Paul, thank you. That 94 accident that we were telling you about earlier has since cleared, but we picked up a new one also on I-94 on the eastbound side right at 696 and that is in like the Farmington Hills ish area. We've got an accident there that has the right lane block, but oh, actually it looks like it's slowing down traffic just a little bit as traffic volumes start to pick up uh, around 524 what, what this morning. Did you say that accident? Uh, I-94 and 696 is more in like the Macomb area. East, east side for yeah, sure. East side. <laughs> I went complete opposite. I'm, I'm Way looking other at the side map. Of town. I'm like, what is he talking about? <laughs> That's why, I mean, Listen, Kim DiGiulio has the job that she has. We'll, we'll do our best to check and balance. That right there was job security for her, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it, it was. 525 is your time in good health. New research suggests a plant-based diet may lower the risk of kidney disease and heart failure. Yeah, both studies tracked thousands of adults for nearly 25 years, and it showed the people who stick mostly to fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and nuts 
were far less likely to develop chronic kidney disease and heart failure compared to those who did not. A southern diet of heavy fried foods, as delicious as that sounds, as well as processed meats and sugary drinks was li linked to the highest risk of heart failure. And we know that, so <laughs> try your best to eat more fruits and vegetables and whole grains and and nuts. That does not sound as delicious as, oh, a Giordano's pizza. <laughs> and then they run all these Chick-fil-A commercials in the morning. It's not helping. Man. It isn't. <laughs> 525 is your time. And after a year of privacy scandals, Facebook is now cracking down on the popular personality quizzes on its website. The company said apps that don't offer much more than those kinds of quizzes won't be allowed. Quizzes are often used to gather your personal data from unsuspecting Facebook users. Although Facebook didn't really say how they're going to enforce a new policy they did say that they want to make sure apps that ask for data actually improve the user's experience. And we continue to follow breaking news this morning from Detroit's west side where a woman has shot a, a potential carjacker. Nick Monticelli has the very latest. Um. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good morning, everybody. Here on your Friday morning, breaking news we're following is from Detroit's west side. You can see police on the scene where a woman shot a suspected car thief. And police are now questioning her and trying to investigate what happened. Paul? Oh, it has rained all night and it is still raining, but we are now tracking something that isn't rain for the upcoming weekend. Yes, we're tracking weekend snow. We will detail that straight ahead. See, if I was a meteorologist, I think I would just say, hey, it's been raining, but it's Friday. Let's look forward and just not even mention the snow. <laughs> and try to go with the positive. Yeah. The positive yeah. Stuff. And then if you happen to see snow on the weekend, you're like, what? I didn't know this was going to happen. But at least you're not like anticipating it and being like bummed out and angry for the next 24 hours. I, I'm, I'm looking at it like we've had a lot of consistencies when it comes to bad weather and Paul Gross filling in. <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> We're it's taking your last you out day. Back. We're giving you the yank. Yes, Brandon is back Monday. He can take the well, actually then the weather will turn. No, actually we are going to have an active weather pattern next week. But you know, usually my forecasts are rated PG, you know, Paul Gross, but this forecast is actually kind of rated X. And so you don't want to see it. Anyhow, we're in the 40s right now with all that rain falling. So it is just a miserable morning out there. And you can see all the water over us. Now there is a little bit of a, it's a bit more ragged and broken up back to the west here, but it's going to be a while before that gets through here. And so we're going to have the rain to start. So that means a really wet rush hour tapering off to rain and maybe scattered rain by the time we get to noon or early afternoon and then this afternoon the sun's going to start breaking out uh, but the thing is we're going to get a scattered shower or a pop-up thunderstorm even by late afternoon and the other noteworthy part of the day it's going to become windy so take note of that the high temperature today getting up into the low 60s now we are not under a wind advisory but one has been issued by the national weather service for the western half of the lower peninsula so we could see wind gusts of 30 to perhaps Perhaps even 40 miles per hour. We'll break down that weekend snow for you coming up in just a bit, Rhonda. All right, Paul, thank you. We do have an accident this morning still over on the east side. It's eastbound I-94 right at I-696. The right lane is blocked and traffic is slow in the area. Also, the roadways are very wet. Watch out for standing and pooling water as well and give yourself a little extra drive time this morning. At 532, we do want to get you updated on that breaking news that we're following. It's out of Detroit on the west side where we've learned a suspected car thief has been shot. Yes, this is happening on Coyle Street in the area of Greenfield and Finkel. Nick Monticelli has been there talking with investigators this morning. And do we know how that person is that was shot? So we do know that person is a 49 year old male and he is in temporary serious condition expected to be OK. The person who lives there, the car owner who shot the would be thief is 61 and she is being questioned as we speak. Now all this happening right behind me here happened on about 2:30 this morning. You can see it's that suburban that's right in the middle of everything right there. You can't really tell anything from this vantage point, but there is some damage to the front side of the vehicle. Now again happening on 2:30 this morning. In fact, we've got some video from earlier this morning that we can show you the woman again 61 who lives inside of the home here heard some noises outside, so she went outside to check on it. And that's when she found this would be thief inside of her car. So there was a fight, a struggle, and at that point she pulled out a gun and shot the suspect again. Temporary serious condition at the hospital. Now, unfortunately, the woman does not have a CPL uh, license. She's not a holder, so that could become a problem for her down the road here 
Not sure if charges uh, could be pending or if there's a self-defense issue here. That It kind of gets murky in situations like this. But again, there is a detective on scene right now talking to her inside of that home. So back out here live again, the only two people involved are the car owner and the would-be thief. And it's kind of an open and closed situation as far as that part of it goes. Again, the only issue would be the CPL here. We're live here on the west side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All righty, Nick, thank you for the update there. 533 is your time, and at least 20 weddings are out of a venue. The bride and the groom out of a place to get married after a Clinton Township hotel is sold from right underneath them. An investment group recently bought the Concord Inn after plans were approved to, the, to commission the hotel into a senior living facility this year. And that would leave many couples like this one here who had already put down a deposit questioning whether they'll get their money back. Who the heck could sleep at night knowing that they just put 20 young couples out of a venue for their weddings? Well, this issue was just brought to us at the meeting, so I'm glad you came and told us about it. Well, the new owners are pledging to get to the bottom of the situation. In the meantime, Shelby Gardens Banquets and Events said that they would work with the canceled weddings. No, let's hope so. Time now is 534 and a dramatic rescue in Sterling Heights as police officers rescue a suspect a drunk driver from a crash. Hey man, look away. We're gonna bust the window out, okay? And you gotta get out of the car. Can you open that door? Your car is on fire. Come on! That suspected drunk driver was unconscious as his car was on fire, and it spread earlier this month at 17 Mile and DeQuinder. Police could not bust out the windows, but eventually pried the door open and were able to pull that driver out and arrest him. I busted out so much. Scammers in Virginia are trying to take advantage of grandparents right here in Metro Detroit. An 81 year old grandmother from Macomb County almost lost all of this cash. That's nearly $10,000 man posing as an attorney called her and told her that he needed it to bond her grandson out of jail. She sent the money to an address near Richmond, but thanks to a tip from the Utica Police Department, officers were able to find that package and intercept it before it got in the wrong hands. So a Southfield massage therapist has been suspended or their license was suspended for allegedly sexually assaulting his clients. The Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs announced Thursday that Carl Ellis's massage license was suspended. That means that he can't practice massage therapy until it's determined if he did or didn't break Michigan's public health code. Now, the suspension comes after two of Ellis's clients came forward to report the allegations against him. A Dearborn Heights Councilman Raymond Muscat will be in court today facing felony charges. Back in December, Muscat and his neighbor were both charged after a fight broke out over the dumping of old newspapers on Muscat's property. Police say that Muscat caught him in the act and then stormed into the man's house. The councilman now faces felony charges of home invasion, a sentence that carries up to five years in jail. 536 is your time on your Friday morning. It's still ahead. More than 30 colleges are looking for students this weekend. And they'll be in one place. We'll tell you where. Also, the doctor is in. A local hospital is system is trying to reduce the risk of opioid addiction and help patients battling chronic pain. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. Ahead, see how you can help fight the opioid crisis and learn about options to ease pain in a safer way. Welcome back, everybody. The results are in after the autopsy of a boy whose body was found in a shallow grave in northern Illinois. The autopsy determined that the five year old died of blunt force trauma to his head and revealed that he had been struck multiple times. The boy was missing for over a week after his body was discovered buried in a wooded area a few miles from the family's home. Both parents are being held on a five million dollar bond on the charge of the child's murder. In good health now, there is much debate this week over who's to blame for the opioid crisis and what is the best way to fight it. But there is no debate that more needs to be done. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with one local health system's efforts to reduce the risk of opioid addiction and help patients battling chronic pain. One thing that all of the experts agree on is that there is no one solution to the opioid crisis. Beaumont Health is hoping to make it easier for doctors, patients and the public to help with two upcoming events. It's, it's similar to keeping a, an armed weapon in, in, in the reach of your children. You know, I think these are deadly medications. Uh, they are addictive medications. 
Dr. Roy Soto doesn't mince words when it comes to the potential risk of opioids. He's a Beaumont anesthesiologist and president of the Michigan Society of Anesthesiologists. The addiction happens very, very quickly. So using these pills for one, two, three days can cause addiction that can last years. If you talk to opioid addicts, a large percentage of them say that their first exposure to those medications were found in their family's medicine cabinets. We know that realtors are concerned about that during open houses that people go through and look for narcotics and medicine cabinets and people don't really know what to do with those medicines. They keep them just in case, but if they want to get rid of them, they don't know what the right thing to do is. Today, seven Beaumont hospitals will be hosting a drug take back event from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Not only do we take opioids, but we also take leftover muscle relaxants and Valium and, and any other medications that people don't want to, to keep around their house. Disposing of leftover drugs properly is critical, but what about patients who are still in pain? Beaumont wants to address that issue too. So we have a free community event, and it's really to educate people about a non-opioid approach to managing pain. The event is Tuesday, April 30th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Beaumont Royal Oak Administration Building. It's geared toward people with chronic pain, including back, leg, arm, or pelvic pain, failed knee surgery, or peripheral neuropathy. Dr. Kenneth Peters is one of the many panelists. What we're really highlighting at this is something called neuromodulation, or stimulating nerves. There's different types of electrodes that we can put at the nerves that would override pain signals. They'll also discuss a broad range of approaches to pain. We have physical therapy, we have you know, pain psychology, we have integrative medicine talking about acupuncture and other things like that. The message to patients, don't give up. There's always hope. There's always something else that we can do. And even if we can't find something right now, we're always doing research trying to find you know, new technologies, new treatments that can really improve quality of life. Now you can find all of the details on the drug take back event today and the chronic pain panel on Tuesday on the health page at clickondetroit.com. Now the pain panel event is free, but if you're planning to go, they would like you to register in advance just so they know how many people to expect. Back to you. All righty, Doc, thank you. It's 433. And we are... 543. <laughs> That's the dyslexia going on there. 543 is there your go. time, and we have been talking about Brandon Rue for the past month. It's been a little over four weeks since he went in for back surgery, and guess what? He's coming back on Monday. Guess who's back? <laughs> Brandon's <laughs> back. back. Yeah. yeah. Looking We're forward excited, to it. excited, but we do appreciate Paul for... No, we don't. ...filling <laughs> in. No, no, not not today. Forecast. I was just saying. <laughs> Definitely not looking forward to your forecast but it has been a joy to work with you well, for these thanks. last few weeks. And Andrew. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, you know, I love working with you guys, too. So it's been a lot of fun for me, too. And uh, except when I have to deliver news like what I'm going to deliver in a moment. Uh, right now, it's a rainy morning out there. Most of us are in the mid to upper 40s. Uh, Adrian, you've snuck into the low 50s. The wind is not very strong yet, but it is going to pick up through the day. It's going to become a downright windy day. So I thought maybe we'll brighten the spirits with this amazing storm pin. Lori in East China Township posted this one yesterday morning. Look at that sunrise. That is absolutely unreal. Great and great photo composition too. I mean, that, that just, what a great shot. That made me feel a little better. And then now I gotta go back to this. Now I don't feel better. Look, I mean, you can see the low pressure that's pushing up to the northeast here, and we're just right in that rain shield with this thing. Now this back here, this is actually in a weakening trend, and, and that's been modeled pretty well, and so we're not worried so much about the stuff back to the northwest. It's this stuff here, and you can see starting to break up a bit on the western edge here, but there is still plenty of rain out there, so this is just going to be a process here through the morning. So here we are with, the, again, the, the main emphasis shifting to the thumb through the morning, and then by noontime, this is more of a scattered shower pattern. It's starting to move out, and by early afternoon it will move out, but then look at this. Uh, this is something new with the models today. By late afternoon, enough instability where maybe we pop up a scattered shower, possibly even a thunderstorm. Again, widely scattered. Most of us don't see it, but don't be surprised if you get one of these things late in the day. And then we clear out this evening, and we start the day Saturday with some sunshine. So let's now talk about the Saturday storm. So here it is Saturday morning when you wake up, it is still going to be in Nebraska moving eastward. So we start with the sun by afternoon. We cloud up and we should stay dry for the bulk of the daytime hours. Uh, you can see here this is five o'clock. Maybe we get some rain approaching Lenaway County late in the afternoon and then we see it's rain initially in the evening, but then as temperatures cool, it changes to snow and believe me, if you're up early Sunday morning, 
it's really going to be coming down. We're not talking flurries here. This is going to be really coming down. It's just the pavements above freezing, and so it's only going to really stick to elevated surfaces like a deck or patio furniture or your car parked outside, uh, for example. And then we get back to some sunshine by Sunday afternoon. So. Uh, uh, we're going to have really the middle of the weekend, the overnight period Saturday night where most of this weather is going to come in. 62 today, again, becoming windy with the morning rain and then a pop up shower possible late in the afternoon. Only low 50s this weekend, not very spring like. And then notice as we get into next week, a very unsettled pattern uh, shakes out here. It's going to be uh, it's just going to be a lot of off and on rain through the coming week, Rhonda. That's not the kind of forecast we'd like as we get ready for May, but we'll have to muscle through it. Paul, thank you. And getting to our roadways this morning, they are wet, so use extra caution as you're heading out. The accident along 94 at 696 has cleared, so there's the good news. And now we do want to tell you about some construction. So southbound side of I-75 right at I-94, that's going to close tonight, 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. on Monday. Again, southbound 75 at 94. Also, the 94 ramps close as well to southbound 75. So you're going to be diverted off. You can take the Davison over to the lodge to continue southbound into the downtown area. And again, 10 p.m. tonight until 5 a.m. on Monday morning. All right, right now we want to check in with Dylan Dreyer and Craig Melvin for a look at what's coming up on the third hour of today, including an appearance from Diane Guerrero, who takes us behind the scenes with a look at her latest series called Doom Patrol. Good morning. This morning, meet the CEO who turned her own fashion dilemma into a booming business, how she's helping women look good and feel good. Plus, she's gone from Orange is the New Black to an unlikely superhero. Diane Guerrero fills us in on her new show, Doom Patrol. And we're putting a twist on pretzels. Joy Bauer adding superfoods to some of our favorite snacks this morning on the third hour of today. All righty, 548 is your time. Let's take a look at some of the events that are happening for your calendar this weekend. This Saturday, in fact, the free 2019 Destination HBCU Experience and College Fair will be in full swing. More than 30 historically black colleges and universities will be there representing schools from the Southeast, the Midwest, and the East Coast. What a great opportunity. Students can participate in breakout sessions, panel discussions with alumni on topics including financial aid and scholarships and campus life. It's a great experience and it, it runs on Saturday, this Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. It will be at the Southfield High School for the Arts and Technology, and that is right there on Lasser Road. And then the annual Festival of the Arts, hosted by Warren Consolidated Schools, is underway. The festival runs through May 20th. It's at the Sterling Heights Senior Center. This show is open to the public, and it runs Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 4.15 p.m. And the festival features about 400 pieces of artwork that was created by all those students. Also this weekend, Thomas the Tank Engine is pulling into the Henry Ford for the Steam Team Tour 2019. You can enjoy a day of family fun with Thomas the Tank Engine at Greenfield Village. It'll be Saturday and Sunday. Definitely a fun event to take the kids to. Then Detroit Public Schools Community District is hosting its annual Level Up High School Enrollment Expo, and that is tomorrow. Detroit Middle and High School students are going to have a chance to attend SAT prep and college readiness workshops. This expo is Saturday. It's at Cassock High School from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Very cool. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Jeopardy winner. Uh, he's, he's still winning. Champion. He's still winning. His name is James Holzhauer, or Jeopardy James, as they've been calling him. <laughs> and he's continuing to break records, and as we mentioned, still going. Yes, he is. Last strong. night, he continued his impressive run by winning his 16th straight show, bringing home a total of $1.2 million. It's unbelievable. It is. He is the only person, well, I should say the second person in the game's 35-year history to actually hit the $1 million mark in the regular season so pretty impressive yeah and he just keeps winning and winning he's going for his 17th consecutive yes. tonight and we have a local contestant actually that was on the show with him from yep. ann arbor coming up in our next hour she lost she did of course but we're gonna talk to her because she's sharing how he's able to do this yeah. it's more than just how he's able to you know finagle with his bidding right all right, still to come, thieves caught on camera stealing for a convenience store. Find out what they were going away with. On the next Live in the D, the new hot spot for amazing fried chicken and beer pong. Plus, a sneak peek at the new Avengers movie. Need to say more? Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. 
All right, rain is still falling across most of the area. Most of us are in the mid to upper 40s right now. The rain will taper to more of a showery pattern by late morning, early afternoon. Then the sun comes out and then a pop up shower or storm is possible. High 62 and it becomes very windy today. Rhonda. All right, Paul, thank you. Well, despite the fact that it has been raining all night long, literally you went to bed to it raining and it's still raining this morning. We're not getting any reports of any standing water or any flooding so far this morning, but let us know if you see anything. Uh, so we are looking clear. You can see the maps are looking good. A couple of red arrows, but nothing major to slow you down this morning. It is 555 and director John Singleton is now in a coma after having a major stroke more than a week ago. Court documents filled by his mother state that the 51 year old filmmaker cannot provide for his personal needs or manage his financial resources. Singleton was the first black director nominated for an Academy Award. He is famous for movies including Boys in the Hood and Poetic Justice. Singleton's family previously confirmed that he did have a stroke last week but didn't give any details on his condition. Ousted Nissan chief Carlos Ghosn is out of jail in Japan. A Tokyo district court said that Ghosn was granted bail at about four and a half million dollars. Prosecutors tried to reverse the decision, but their appeal was rejected by the court. Ghosn has been arrested multiple times, jailed twice after prosecutors accused him of funneling five million dollars of Nissan's money to a car dealership that he controlled. Ghosn, however, says that he is innocent. Well, you won't believe this. A family of thieves, literally the entire family, makes off with $500 worth of cognac at a business in Washington State. You can see here on the security footage, three people enter the store, a man and a woman holding a baby, and also the grandmother. The man calls the clerk to the back of the store, and that was all as a distraction. And the grandma keeps watch while the woman goes behind the front counter and grabs two bottles of Hennessy mm. that apparently cost $250 for each bottle. And there you saw there, she dropped it right there in her skirt. She opened up the side and there was like a pocket, I guess, and she, there was two boxes like that big. And she put it in, quickly put it in there and then just ruffled it back together. Hmm, sounds like this isn't her first time stealing. The grandma signals to the man that their mission is complete. We're good to go. And the suspects eventually pretend to buy some wine. But when the clerk asks for ID, they claim it's in their car and walk right out of the door. I am so shocked they even brought the baby along. Mm, yeah, not good. 557 is your time, everybody. Here on your Friday morning and today is National Pretzel Day. And companies across Detroit are celebrating. Yeah, a lot of them are. Auntie Anne's in the mall offering free original or cinnamon sugar pretzels with a purchase with any purchase of a pretzel item. Wetzel's Pretzels is giving away one free original pretzel and then Ben's Soft Pretzels will give away free jumbo soft pretzels to customers who make at least one dollar donations to the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund. Sounds good. I love a good Yeah, pretzels. absolutely. Salt on it. That's <laughs> so good. Coming up, all new at the top of the hour at 6, local stories from Ann Arbor, Macomb Township in Detroit. Plus, it's only been in theaters for a few hours, but <laughs> Avengers Endgame already smashing records here at home and overseas. And a woman shoots a would-be car thief here on the uh, west side of Detroit. I just talked to detectives what they say will happen because she does not have a license. That's next on Local 4 News today. Our headquarters. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News today at 6 starts now. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for waking up with us. Happy Friday. Despite the rain, it's still Friday. Yes, it certainly is. <laughs> and we are following a lot of stories for you this morning, including breaking news for Detroit's west side, where a woman opened fire on a suspected car thief. Our Nick Monticelli is there live from the scene. Love an update from him. With the eighth pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select T.J. Hawkinson. As predicted, we talked about this yesterday morning. Welcome to the Pride. The Lions betting big on a tight end from Iowa in their first round pick in the NFL draft last night. And Amazon is stepping up its delivery game. If you thought two-day shipping was fast, well, 
We'll tell you how much faster you can expect to get your packages. And meteorologist Paul Gross is here to talk us through all this rain we've been having all night long. Oh, it's been a very wet night. You take that with temperatures in the 40s, and it just has not been a very pleasant night, and it's not a pleasant start to the day. Now, the northwest wind at 10, that's important because that's not too strong right now, but we're going to have gusts between 30 and 40 miles per hour developing this afternoon. And in fact, western half of the lower peninsula, there is actually a wind advisory out there. The gusts could be more numerous over 40 miles per hour. All right, here's the rain. You can see there is a bit of a trend toward a more showery uh, pattern here on the back edge here, and that's as low pressure here drives up to the northeast. So. It's going to be a process through the morning as it becomes more showery. Now we are going to see some sunshine develop this afternoon, but there's also the chance for a pop up, just a, a pop up scattered shower or thunderstorm. The high should get into low 60s as long as we get that sun. And don't forget, it's going to be windy. So we'll talk about the weekend snow coming back and it's coming Saturday night. We'll talk about it in just a few. Everett? No, we don't have to talk about it. Paul, we can just skip right over that. Uh, let's take a look at four live traffic from the Farmington Hills area all the way to the east side. We've got clear maps that show nothing but a bunch of green, so no accidents to report right now. 601 is your time. Let's get you updated on this breaking news that we've been following all morning long. It's from Detroit's west side. That is where a woman shot a man that she says was trying to steal her car. Police are still on the scene. The home is on coil. Our Nick Monticelli is there as well to talk us through. I know you've been talking with investigators about what happened here and the weapon that was used. Yeah, in fact, I just talked to a detective who was here talking to the woman involved, and she kind of gave me an update on where things stand. But before we talk about that, I want to show you that the vehicle involved here is now on a tow truck. It's going to be taken away here momentarily because that vehicle has to be impounded and uh, collected or uh, put away for evidence just in case uh, this case becomes something that the prosecutors here in Wake County have to deal with. You can see the tow truck driver putting it on there. Like I said, it's going to be going away here in just a moment. Uh, I want to go show you some video as well. This all happened at about 2 30 this morning. This video was from when the crime scene technicians were actually out here working and trying to collect evidence. So what happened was around 2 30 a 61 year old woman who lives in the home right next to where this car is parked this SUV is parked heard noises. She went outside and saw a man trying to steal her SUV. So she confronted him and a fight ensued. That is when she pulled a gun and shot that man. He is a 49 year old man. Again, the suspect in this case coming back out here live again. You're going to see this uh, SUV pulling away now on the back of this flat. But again, they're going to put this into a police impound lot because they have to work on it for evidence purposes. And then there's, yeah, there's one remaining DPD car. They will take off and follow that tow truck uh, as it comes back. All right, so coming on back to this side, I was just talking to the detective and she said this case is going to get a little interesting again because the woman who lives here does not have a CPL, so she's not licensed to carry the gun that she used in this shooting. However, there's a self defense aspect here, so she said essentially what's going to happen is they're going to take all their notes and everything they've collected here and give it to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office and let them decide if this was some kind of justified shooting, if the woman can just walk away from this or if she will face charges because of the shooting, even though she was defending her um, what happened here. Now, what's interesting is that you can't shoot somebody over property, but because there was a fight, you could shoot somebody in self-defense. Again, it's a gray area and the lawyers and prosecutors will have to work all that out. And by the way, Everett and Rhonda, the 49 year old who was shot, the would be thief, he is in the hospital and temporary serious condition. We are live here on the west side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All righty, Nick, thank you. It is 604 and breaking news from overnight. Take a look at this. A minivan slammed right into a CVS store and the driver leaves the vehicle right there inside of the building. This is new video from the scene. It's the CVS on Dix near Moran, and we are told that the van is actually on top of the ATM. So I'm not sure if this was an attempted robbery. No arrests have been made. So it's a decision which might impact upcoming elections. As a federal court says, the state must redraw congressional and legislative maps. A three judge panel ruled the maps drawn by Republicans in 2011 violates Democratic voters constitutional rights by diluting the weight of their votes. The court ordered the state legislature to redraw at least 34 of the state's 162 districts. The decision also requires special state Senate elections to be held in 2020 instead of 2022. That will cut the terms of some lawmakers in half. Republicans are promising to appeal the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court. The first ever summit between North Korea's Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin is now over. It ended with no agreement or joint statement. The North Korean leader 
came out of this angry at Washington. Chairman Kim says that the situation on the Korean Peninsula is at a standstill and has reached a critical point where it may return to its original state. This is, as he says, the U.S. took a unilateral attitude in bad faith at the summit with President Trump in February. An update now on that Easter Sunday bombing in Sri Lanka in the capital of Colombo. The country's health ministry has revised the death toll and lowered it to 253 people. But that is still a lot of people that lost their lives. The ministry says that the explosions damaged the bodies of the dead so much that it made it difficult to even identify those who were killed. Officials say that the suspected leader of the group who carried out the attacks was killed in the blast at the Shangri-La Hotel. Police have arrested the group's second in command. It is 606 and there was a tense scene on Detroit's east side as an off duty firefighter rushes in to save a man from a burning home. Right here you see Amare Dabney ignoring the intense flames as well as smoke and runs right into the home. This is in the area of Wavane and Kaju. Dabney was driving by with his son and he stopped when he saw all the smoke and flames. And as you see here, without any gear, ran inside and pulled this man out to safety. There's no word yet on how this fire started. In Macomb Township now, an update on that semi crash which leveled this house. We now know that five vehicles were also damaged when the truck blew a tire and the driver lost control. This is right at 26 Mile and uh, Omo Road right near there. No one was hurt, but the Macomb County Sheriff's Office is now saying no charges will be filed. Well, the first round of the NFL draft is in the books and the Lions came out with a new tight end. Yes, it is the same player that we talked about this time yesterday morning. But for some reason, Jason, a lot of fans were not feeling this pick leading up to last night and wanted the Lions to make another one. The Pennsylvania <laughs> polka. It's Groundhog Day again. After the bust that were Eric Ebron and Brandon Pettigrew, it was the last thing many fans wanted to hear. But with the eighth overall pick, the Lions went with TJ Hawkinson, who was described as the best tight end in the draft. At 6'5", 250 pounds, experts say he could be, say, the next Rob Gronkowski. Hawkinson says he's all in on being a Detroit Lion. I can control what I can control, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come to work. Uh, you know, this is this has been a dream of mine. The organization is is such a good organization. There's great people there. They're very uh, very genuine people, um, as I've recognized. I mean, as I, I can tell, and, and I've heard nothing but good things. Hawkinson spent two seasons at Iowa. He caught 73 balls in those two seasons. He's known as a tight end that can block and catch, and that's exactly why general manager Bob Quinn says he's a good fit for the Honolulu Blue and Silver. Really great player, three down to four down player. Um, that's uh, going to be a big part of our offense going forward. Um, really checked every box that we had in terms of the evaluation process. Um, from on field to third down to red area to blocking to special teams to culture to intelligence to work ethic. You name it, he, he checked basically every box. Let's see what the fans are saying about this pick. Uh, Dennis, not good. Lions, not good. <laughs> Succinct. Howard, right move for the Lions or for Hawkinson? And Vin says, I like the player, just not how high we picked him. There were bigger concerns on the board. And Mike says, love it. Let him play. What do you think? Sound off on our Local 4 Facebook page. Feel free to join in. Lions will be back in the war room today when the second and third rounds of the draft begin. And we will let you know what transpires with the 43rd and 88th overall picks. All right. Sounds good. He sounds like a great player. Okay with it. Yeah. Good for him, too. Exactly. A good team to be a part of. That's right. The 609, everybody. And during the draft, we should point out a certain singer made a surprise appearance. Yeah. We got details on the big announcement from Taylor Swift. That's coming up. Also ahead, an all-in-one workout, and you don't even have to stand up or leave your house to do it. That's next in Fitness Friday. Well, the time is now to play today's trivia, and we are asking you this morning, with the NFL draft underway, who did the Lions select 10 years ago in the first round? Hmm, I have a guess. Who do you think? Checking my math. I can't say, because I might be right. Our producer says it's a trick question, so I don't oh, know. Oh, let's They're head on crafty. over to clickondetroit.com if you think you know the answer without cheating and Googling it. Oh, I'm Head cheating. to the contest page with your answer. You could win a Torvina's Pizza gift card 
if you get the answer right. Don't forget to include your picture, and we will reveal the winner in our 6.30 half hour. Good luck. We're back in a moment. Reggie Bush. Change Livonia. It's Fitness Friday, and I'm back with Matt Hunter here at American Home Fitness. And I love this home equipment because you can do like 30 different workouts with one machine. Yeah, pretty much everything. This is our all-in-one Inspire M2 Home Gym. Uh -huh. It is probably the most complete picture. You could leave your gym membership and have everything you're doing right at home. Go ahead and pull down. Uh -huh. Give me a couple lap pulls. But it covers all of your big bases. Everything is covered on this gym. I'm going to steal that from you. Go ahead and reach right behind you. You got a set of handles back there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now we're going to go hit some tricep extensions. Give me a few there. We're just going to move right down the list. You don't even have to get out of the chair. Go ahead and give me a stomach crunch now with that same handle. That's right. We're just going to keep it moving. It's a very, very fast flow to it, right? I'm not having a lot of changing or downtime. Okay, go ahead and sit that back. Reach over your left side. Mm -hmm. Now I've got my dumbbell handles. This is the big one for the front side of the chest. Go ahead and just give me a few pushes. Okay. And everything locks up out of the way. Oh, yeah. I really feel this. The agent of change is doing strength training. Strength gives me cardio and strength. Cardio just gives me cardio. So this is a huge calorie burner. Go ahead and let me steal that from you. And you can do your whole entire body. Yeah, there we go, right? Body. Didn't even have to change. <laughs> I went right to legs. And now what we're gonna do, go ahead and let that down. I'm gonna rotate this up. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna do backside leg. And you can get this equipment by buying it all at once, but then you also have installations, right? That's right. So we have an offer on this gym, deliver, tax, out the door, everything for almost what you're paying to go to your gym membership, about 48, 49 bucks a month, out the door, no interest. Okay, well, if you wanna learn more about all the American Home Fitness equipment, they have seven locations across the metro area, or you can simply search Fitness Friday, at click on Detroit.com. I like how I could sit the yeah. entire time. Now let's go, 15 more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody. Time now is 6.15 on your finally Friday. Yeah, morning. and it's a soggy start to the day. In yeah. fact, it was a soggy night. It rained all night long, and it's not stopped yet. No, it hasn't. <laughs> but as a friend of mine once said, oh. you do not have to shovel rain. But that is true. And you know what? I was at an event last night, and I'm like, listen, it's mild. We weren't cold. But, I mean, it, it just rained all night. So it's just one of those things. It's a, yeah, it's a really not a pretty start to the day. We're in the mid to upper 40s in most areas, a couple of 50s around here. The wind has not picked up so much yet, but it is going to pick up during the day today. And here we have on radar, you see the big slug of rain that came through. It was much bigger earlier. Now it's more of a showery pattern that we're going to be dealing with for the next few hours, although it's still going to be steady rain for a while up here in the northeastern part of the area, up into the thumb. But eventually by late morning, early afternoon, this stuff should temporarily end, and I'll I'll tell you what I mean by temporarily in a minute. So here's our big, this is the most noteworthy weather system in the whole country. Right here, our little area of low pressure. And by the way, strong storms in Florida on the trailing cold front. This is our weekend issue. So we'll show you that now. So today, again, this rain is moving out. We do get some sunshine developing this afternoon, but a pop-up shower or even a pop-up thunderstorm is possible late in the afternoon. Uh, more of us will not get one than will, but just be aware it's a possibility. That ends very quickly this evening. We start our Saturday with sunshine. Clouds roll in Saturday afternoon. Then by late in the afternoon, Lenaway County, you're right on the front range here of maybe getting some raindrops, but uh, we see rain start to spread in during the evening. Changes to snow overnight as temperatures cool. And when you wake up Sunday morning, some of us are going to actually see uh, a coating of white out there. But uh, by Sunday afternoon, you can see that we get back to some sunshine. Now, if it were to stick, if it were to stick, this looks like it would be a, a one to three inch snowfall. But again, the, the pavement temperature is above freezing. So is the air temperature. So not much on the roads, maybe just a tiny bit of slush, but no. All right, 62 the high today. Again, it becomes windy with some afternoon sunshine developing in that pop up shower or storm. 50s for the weekend and not real pretty, but uh, next week also looks very unsettled and we stay in the 50s for quite a while into the middle of next week. All right, our weather window this morning. Well, the Hanson's weather window is not a pretty picture either. Uh, the window is clean, but the, the rain on the window is not helping and also the fog downtown. Not a pretty picture, guys. It's just a, a dreary start to our Friday. All right, Paul, thank you. And it is dreary on the roads. It's wet, damp, so make sure that you're allowing yourself extra drive time because it will slow you down this morning. But the good news is we don't have any accidents to pass along, but we do have construction. 
westbound M5 between Middle Belt and I-275. Watch out for construction there that will close the westbound side from 9 p.m. tonight until 8 p.m. on Monday. Again, that is the westbound side of uh, M5 Middle Belt to I-275. So something to keep in mind there tonight. The detour is Grand River or 8 Mile. All right, it is 618. Let's get into today's consumer headlines. Avengers Endgame already smashing box office records. But first, Amazon stepping up its delivery game a full day, in fact. Let's turn things over to Caroline Woods, joining us live at NASDAQ in from Maribel this morning. Good morning. Hey there, good morning, Evrod. Yes, good news for impatient people. Amazon is cutting its delivery time in half for Prime members. Packages will be delivered for free in just one day instead of the two-day shipping Prime now offers. Amazon has already been providing faster shipping to some members, but no timetable was available for when one-day shipping would be offered to all members. Amazon expects to spend $800 million this quarter to make that change. The average tax refund this year was slightly lower. The IRS says refunds average $2,725. That's $55 lower than a year ago. Tax reform gave Americans more in their paychecks, which led to the smaller refunds. So far, the IRS has received 137 million returns. It's expecting 150 million by the time everyone files. The Avengers Endgame has already shattered two box office records. The superhero movie rang up $169 million in ticket sales internationally when it opened this week. It also had a record-breaking day in China when it debuted. Here in the U.S., the movie started playing in some theaters last night, and at last check, it sold 100, or, sorry, $43 million in tickets. That topped last year's Avenger, Avengers Infinity War, all of this according to the website Deadline. Evrod, could be a good weekend planned with the kids plan with the kids although it sounds like maybe you might be shoveling did Don't, i hear that right mm, no, sh 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 caroline no 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 that might make it real okay <laughs> <laughs> all right caroline we'll send some of that snow your way in new york uh let's take a look at this though doesn't this oh man that looks delicious that looks so good doesn't it yeah you're gonna want to save some room for dessert if you go to kfc mm, this mm. is their new dessert biscuit wow is covered in some cinnamon brown sugar glaze, mm -hmm. drizzled with that delicious Cinnabon cream yeah, cheese frosting. Me. <laughs> Look at us. So Just great mouths this morning. watering. Right? Why aren't we tasting this right now? Okay. And okay. KFC, somebody out there works there. Can't you bring us a sample? Oh, well, it's they're going to be available starting Monday through June 30th just in time for Brandon's return. Is it's it bad to imagine like maybe a piece of fried chicken, you know, like right in the middle of it? Little, you know. It's not chicken and waffles, but it's kind of that feeling. <laughs> Looks good. I love this show. <laughs> 621, everybody. Oh, let's talk about Taylor Swift. She is back, officially dropping daily hints about a new single for the past few weeks on Instagram, even launching a countdown clock, teasing the big reveal. Yeah, and even got her spot in the NFL draft last night. Swift came clean about the new track called Me. And here's a quick listen if you missed it last night. I know that I would psycho on the phone I never leave well enough alone And trouble's gonna follow where I go And there's a lot of cool chicks out there But one of these things is not like me. Sounds like what you'd expect from Taylor Swift to me, right? Sure does. The single is from her upcoming seventh studio album. No word yet on when it will be released. I can see, like, teen girls loving that. <laughs> totally. Our 6 a.m. producer said that this is his new favorite jam. Oh. Riding Interesting. Uh, down the lodge to this as he heads <laughs> home this morning. He knows who he is. In 622. <laughs> He's so mad at me right now. Uh, it's upsetting some brides to be. Coming up, why the NFL draft is causing a disruption down in Nashville. But first, they targeted his Tesla, a costly prank caught on camera, and the video gets a good look at the teens who did it. All right, if you are getting ready to get the kids ready to head to the bus stop, rainy for the morning bus stop, upper 40s to near 50. This afternoon, the sun breaking out, windy, low 60s, a pop-up shower or thunderstorm possible after that afternoon bus stop. Everod? All right, Paul, thank you. Take a look at your maps here across Metro Detroit. No accidents to report. We are all clear. The search continues for a group of teenagers caught on camera egging a car in Ann Arbor at the Meyer store parking lot with the car owner still inside. Mm -hmm. These are the image and they came directly from Darren Lee's car because it was recording. Four guys in this Cadillac SUV pull up and start whipping those eggs at Lee's Tesla 
and once they noticed that Lee was actually still in the vehicle, they took off. I think they were going to cover my car with like all five dozen eggs and they saw me and you know they took off real quick. And thanks to his car recording, we all saw them. After washing his car, Lee did notice that those eggs left some scratches all over the front of the vehicle, and the cost to fix it is about 800 bucks. So Lee hopes that someone recognizes these teenagers so that they can take responsibility for the damage they've done to his car. 626 is your time and coming up next at 630 local stories for you from Dearborn, Waterford and Sterling Heights. Plus you are looking at $10,000 in cash, but it almost ended up in the wrong hands. We're talking about a scam targeting seniors that almost happened. We'll tell you more when we come right back. Dot com. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we're continuing to follow this breaking news this morning from Detroit's West Side, where a woman shoots someone that she claims was trying to steal her car. And a dramatic rescue all caught on camera in Sterling Heights. What police did to get a suspected drunk driver out of a burning car. Well, uh, this morning's weather and this weekend's weather can be represented by one thing. Is that Yuck. an emoji? Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. This is I mean, it's a yucky start to the day and wait till you see the snow that we're talking about for the weekend. I'll have your forecast straight ahead. That is that red emoji angry face. Mm -hmm. You know when you use that one, you're mad. I prefer the one that has that red emoji face, but then it's got like the dollar sign and the exclamation mark and the asterisk. Oh, I gotta find that one. <laughs> it's a lot going on. Paul knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how we're gonna be feeling on Saturday. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you oh, just... like it's like a little bomb? Uh, uh, yeah, like a certain letter bomb. If yeah. you know oh, I mean. shoot. Yeah. Let me like see. Like certain expletive deleted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm She's I don't think I've ever used that one. Yeah. Oh, you will now. You're not going to get blamed for it like I do. All right. We have uh, temps in the upper 40s in most areas right now. A couple of key things. First of all, the wind here, northwest at 10. That's going to really pick up during the course of the day. And also the pressure. Hey, for you folks, uh, you know, if you have some achy joints this morning or a migraine or something like that, it could be. The pressure is pretty low, 29.4. Two, so it's a it's a really rough start to the day. Now we don't have a wind advisory. There is a wind advisory out here back to the west, but that's for wind gusts that should be more numerous in the 40 to 45 mile per hour range. For us, we're looking at 30 to 40 this afternoon. We'll have maybe some 40 mile an hour gusts, but basically here's the rain that's come through during the morning hours. We have low pressure here that's moving up to the northeast, and you can see how things on the back side of this are starting to break up a bit. So it's more showery right now, and that's going to continue through the morning and then we kind of get a break in the early afternoon. A pop up shower or storm can't be ruled out late afternoon. About 62 for the high as long as we get that sun. And again, it's going to get quite windy. Rhonda. All right. I want to thank our viewers, Janine <laughs> and also my sister Robin, because they text me the emoji. I now know what it is. <laughs> Good morning and thank you for waking up with us girls. All right, let's take a look at our roadways and take a look. We do have an accident. So if you're traveling southbound 75 in the northbound direction at seven miles, the left lane is blocked this morning. And now let's get you updated on the breaking news from Detroit's west side, where a woman shoots a man that she says was, was trying to steal her car. This all happened on Coyle Street in the area of Greenfield and Finkel. Nick Monticelli joins us now live. He's been talking with investigators, and this case has gotten a little tricky for this woman. It certainly has because the woman who was trying to defend herself or maybe her property could face some charges because she didn't have a license for the gun that was used in all this. So uh, the scene is clear, the car is gone, but the homeowner lives in that house right there and the suburban that was involved in this was parked in between of these two SUVs right here. In fact, why don't we just show you the video of all this. It happened at about 2.30 this morning again here in the 14,000 block of Coil. So a woman, 61 years old, Living inside of this house, heard some commotion outside. Open the door, walks outside with her gun, realizes that somebody is in her car trying to steal it. She confronts this man who was 49 years old and then gets into a scuffle, a struggle. During that struggle, she takes out the gun and shoots him. He was taken to the hospital. He's in temporary serious condition. But again, she is now in limbo, so to speak, because she didn't have a license for that gun. So the detective spent a whole lot of time talking to her overnight. I talked to that detective. She said essentially what they're going to do is put this case together and send it to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office to see 
if they think this woman should face any kind of charges. It gets really sticky because you're not allowed to use a gun to defend your property. You, of course, can use a gun in self-defense, so it really depends exactly at what point that gun was used in this case. All of that, again, something the prosecutors have to iron out. So back out here live, uh, the scene is clear. Everything is wrapped up at this point. We're hoping to talk to the woman involved in all of this. That's something we're going to try to get to a little bit later on. In the meantime, again, that man, 49 years old, is in the hospital and is expected to be okay. Well, you're live here on Detroit's West Side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Alrighty, Nick, thank you. It is 634 right now, and new this morning, Michigan State Police are investigating a deadly shooting in Inkster. Police responding to reports of a shooting on Durand Court right near Middle Belt and Annapolis. A man was shot and killed in this area, and right now police suspect uh, that the suspect might be in a black Ram pickup. We're going to get to some stories that we're following from all across Metro Detroit this morning, including stories out of Dearborn Heights, Macomb County and Waterford Township. We do want to begin in Sterling Heights, though, and take a look at this. It's a pretty dramatic rescue. Police officers trying to pull a suspected drunk driver who's passed out out of a fiery crash. The driver was unconscious and after a head on collision in the rain earlier this month on 17 mile into Quinder, that car was burning with the driver inside and with the fire burning and the driver out cold, officers tried everything they could to try and get this man out. Hey man, look away. We're going to bust the window out, okay? And you got to get out of the car. Can you open that door? Your car is on fire. Come on. Some tense moments there. They were not even able to break that window, but they were eventually able to pry the door open and pull the driver out and, of course, arrest him. Dearborn Heights Councilman Raymond Muscat will be in court today. He's facing felony charges. It was back in December. The Muscat and his neighbor were both charged after a fight broke out over the dumping of old newspapers on Muscat's property. Police say Muscat caught the neighbor in the act and then stormed into the man's house. The councilman now facing felony charges of home invasion, and this has a sentence that could carry up to five years in jail. An 81 year old grandmother from Macomb County almost lost all of this cash in a scam. This is actually almost $10,000. There was a man posing as an attorney who called her and told her that her uh, grandson needed to be bonded out of jail and this attorney needed the cash to do so. Well, she sent the money to an address near Richmond, Virginia, but thanks to a tip from the Utica Police Department, the officers were able to find that package before it got into the wrong hands. Police in Waterford Township need your help in identifying a suspect accused of stealing a purse. Take a look at his image there. Police say that this man picked up the purse after it was accidentally left behind in the play area of the McDonald's restaurant on Elizabeth Lake Road. He left the store in a black Chrysler minivan that you see here with another female and a child in that car. If you think you know who it is, you're asked to call Waterford Police. So wedding bells will soon be ringing and that means spending money and not just for the bride and groom before you say I can't to your friend's wedding saying I do because maybe you can't afford it. You'll want to hear this. Plus Jason is in the carport. Good morning. Good morning. The juggernaut Jeopardy James has done it again. So what makes this champ so good besides the smarts and apparently the lack of fear? We hear from a local woman who found out the hard way. Everett. But first, under quarantine, two California universities now taking some pretty drastic measures to help keep that measles outbreak under control. Can't get your energy bill down? Look no further than your washer and dryer. Tomorrow morning, what you're probably doing wrong that's costing you money. Cedar Point. Welcome back, everybody. Several are dead and at least 10 others are injured after this fiery crash involving at least 15 vehicles and trucks. Now, this happened on Interstate 70 in Lakewood, Colorado. It's about eight miles outside of Denver. An out of control semi truck slammed into stop traffic on I 70. Traffic was backed up due to the crash, a previous crash, which apparently that semi driver didn't see. The driver of the semi is among the injured and is in the hospital. The exact number of people killed has not been released, but police are only saying there were multiple fatalities. So some students in two Los Angeles County universities are not allowed back at school 
as they were exposed to the measles and they can't prove that they have been vaccinated. They also need to notify LA public health authorities if they develop symptoms. Up to 100 students at UCLA and Cal State LA might have to stay in their homes or their dorms for up to three weeks. This quarantine is a response to a local outbreak of the highly contagious disease. Officials said there are at least five confirmed cases of measles now in LA County. Time now, 641, and oh man, oh man, he just keeps winning all those, all those racks, all that cash. <laughs> We're talking about Jeopardy James that has won over a million dollars so far and counting. And we're getting to learn a little bit more about his strategy and how he's able to do it, Jason. He has now made it 16 in a row. James Holzhauer once again blowing past the competition on Thursday, winning close to 100, I'm sorry, $91,000. That brings his total to $1,225,987. By now, you've probably seen his strategy, but we caught up with a recent contestant who lost to Juggernaut James and she revealed his secret. The name Ken Jennings is iconic when you talk about Jeopardy success stories, winning 74 games in 2004, winning two and a half million dollars. But consider this, current reigning money champion, James Holzhauer. A professional sports gambler. From He's already won half of what Jennings won in a fraction of the time. As winnings total $1,061,554. When Rebecca McNitt played against him, she says he figured out the magic, a quinfecta of talents that include well, he's a very good player. He's very smart. I knew a lot of the questions that were up on the board, but I was ringing in and being beaten on many of the questions. He's lucky, getting lots of daily doubles. And so there he is, the daily double. And then having the guts, courage, cojones to bet big. And then the fifth element, his strategy of going big early in the game with seemingly no fear of going home. Oh, you're making that big a bet. So what could possibly knock him out? One answer, one wrong question, one big bet, and time. What are the odds? If any of those things is off, there's always the possibility that someone could beat him. Now, Jeopardy! James will continue to look to extend his championship reign tonight at 7.30 right here on Local 4, so don't touch that dial, as they say. There's no more <laughs> dials. Dials are done. Dials are definitely remote. done, yes. All right, let's get over to Paul Gross, meteorologist Paul Gross, in for Brandon's last day of medical leave. He's returning on Monday. That's right. No complications. My buddy is back on Monday, and I can't wait to see him. He's doing great. He looks forward to seeing you, too. All right, we are in the upper 40s to near 50 in most areas right now. The wind is just a little bit nudged up a little bit over the past couple of hours, and it's going to pick up more during the course of the day. And it's such a dreary start. I had to show you this awesome storm pin. Now, this was posted uh, from Dryden, which is in southeast Lapeer County, just northwest of Almont. So that was yesterday morning sunrise. What a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. That is a spectacular shot. Look at those colors. Thanks for posting that and sending that one on in to us. All right, here you see on the radar, we you can see a bit of a spiral here. If you look carefully, this is low pressure right here moving up to the northeast and on the back side. Now we're notice we're starting to see things kind of break up into a more showery pattern and that will be a trend through the morning hours. Now by lunchtime, there'll be fewer showers around. There'll be a few around. We then get some sun, but look at this. By late afternoon, there'll be just enough instability, especially if we get that sun, that we could pop up a scattered shower or a thunderstorm, but they go away at sunset, and then we wake up tomorrow morning to bright, sunny skies. But it doesn't stay that way. Let's broaden the view and show you what's coming next. Uh, there's the storm out in Nebraska. This is 8 o'clock Saturday morning. Starting with the sun, we cloud up in the afternoon. And then by late in the afternoon, we start to see rain approaching the area. And it'll be rain at first in the evening. Saturday night plans don't look good. And then it changes to snow overnight Saturday night. So if you wake up early Sunday morning, you're going to see that. But then that scoots out of here and we get back to sunshine by Sunday afternoon. And there will be a coating on elevated surfaces like patio furniture, decks, your car, mailboxes, things like that, but shouldn't really see much on the roads. So about 60, 62 degrees today, as long as we get that sun this afternoon, and again, a pop-up shower or a thunderstorm is possible late, and then get ready for 50s for a while. In fact, all the way into the middle of next week, but also uh, the unsettled weather pattern continues, and we're gonna see rain chances really through next Friday. Everett? 
All righty, Paul, if you say so. Thank you. Let's uh, take a look at Fort Life traffic right now. We've got actually two accidents. Uh, the first one is on the westbound side of the Davidson, right at I-75. The right lane is blocked there because of that. And then also on 75 on the northbound side, right at 7 Mile, we got a left lane blocked there as well. We will continue to keep our eyes on the roads for you and monitor these accidents. You can see this one uh, here on 75 is affecting traffic times. So it looks like uh, you might want to add a little, leave a little bit early this morning. We'll let you know once these accidents clear. All right, so wedding season is almost here. You are likely already getting a flood of invitations or you will be very soon. And chances are you may need to say I can't to watching some of your friends say I do because you can't afford to attend the wedding. But declining those invitations may have a lasting and unexpected impact. May kiss your bride. I do is a huge drain on everyone's wallets, even if you're just a guest. If you're saying no to wedding invites this year due to your budget, you're not alone. According to the new study from Bankrate, one in five respondents said they declined a wedding invitation because they couldn't afford it. The study also found the high cost of weddings is putting a strain on more than just finances. 30% of those who declined the RSVP due to financial stress say it damaged their friendship with the couple. Meanwhile, 25% of those who chose not to attend didn't send a wedding gift either. And out of those who still sent gifts, the survey found 57% of people said they would give the same gift if they attended the event while 17% say they would give a lesser gift. According to a separate bank rate study from 2018, guests spent an average of $628 on the wedding and pre-wedding festivities. For some people, that can be a huge chunk of money to spend to see a friend tie the knot, a tricky decision that could cost you in more ways than one. Hopefully Very you have understanding style. friends if you're not able to make it. Absolutely. But speaking of weddings, several bachelorette parties planned in Nashville have been caught off guard by the NFL draft. Uh, yeah, the draft kicked off on Thursday in Nashville, and it is a big, huge event for Nashville, and apparently it's dampening some of the festivities for bachelorette parties as several streets are closed and most bars were holding private parties. No idea, like mind blown when we landed. We had no idea. No idea. No idea. And I think my dad's very disappointed in me that I didn't know. When did they start planning the draft? Because I feel like I just found out about this. I found out three days ago and it made me want to cry. <laughs> Is it that bad that all these athletes are in town? They're cute. It's good eye candy. They're also getting married. They are. <laughs> Only one of them's getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Several of the ladies say that due to the inconvenience, though, their future spouse will pay when they refuse to watch football for the entire season. But actually, you do make a good point. Those bridesmaids need to fan out yeah. and find these drafted and listen, NFL players. It's not that hard to get into a private party. <laughs> you know, a big, huge group of girls. Bat your eyes, flip your hair. You can get into one of those private parties. Don't don't let that discourage you. Like you're like speaking from experience or something. <laughs> uh, we want to give you the answer to today's trivia. Speaking of the NFL, we had asked you a very tricky question, I should say. Uh, the question was, with the NFL draft underway, who did the Lions select 10 years ago in the first round? Yes, well, that's because there were two. And take a look. Vicki Green got it right. Vicki Green of Detroit, she said the first pick, Matthew Stafford. Second pick was Brandon Pettigrew, and you are right. So you win a Tormina's Pizza gift card. Congratulations to you. We're back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. We are continuing to follow breaking news this Friday morning at Detroit's West Side, where a woman shot a suspected car thief. It happened on Coyle Street near Schoolcraft and Greenfield. The 49-year-old suspected gunman is hospitalized. I should say the 49-year-old man who was shot is hospitalized. A 61-year-old woman is being questioned by police because she did not hold a CPL license. Over to Angster now, Michigan State Police are investigating a deadly shooting from this morning. Police responded to reports of a shooting on Durant Court right near Middle Belt and Annapolis. We've learned that one man was shot and killed. Police say the suspect might be in a black Ram pickup. The other breaking news we're following from overnight is this. A minivan slamming right into a CVS store and the driver leaves the vehicle right there. This is new video from the CVS store on Dixon Moran. We're told that the van is actually sitting on top of an ATM. So far, no arrests have been made.
And it's stories to watch for Dearborn Heights Councilman Raymond Muscat will be in court today. He's facing felony charges for an incident that happened back in December where he caught his neighbor dumping old newspapers in his driveway. And then he apparently or allegedly stormed into the man's house, now faces felony charges of home invasion. The Lions are on the clock for the second day of the NFL draft. They have the 43rd pick in the second round and the 88th pick in the third. But for round one, they selected tight end TJ Hawkinson from Iowa. Jeopardy champion James Holzhauer. He's continuing his record breaking winning streak. 16th straight show bringing home a total of $1.2 million. Only the second person in this game's 35 year history to hit the $1 million mark in the regular season. You can, of course, watch Jeopardy tonight, Paul. It's at 7.30. We'll see if he takes home his 17th consecutive win. And if Everybody is watching, that's for sure. And everybody's also watching our weather this morning because it's not real pretty outside. 48 degrees, a lot of showers around, although the steadier, heavier rain is moving out. Wind northwest at 10, and that's going to increase during the day. And the pressure is quite low, so if your joints are achy, that's why. So here you see on radar, there you see the big slug of rain. We do have still showers in the area. And again, it's going to be a process before we can move those out. So for the morning bus stop, we have those showers. I already talked about the upper 40s. Uh, this afternoon, about 60 and windy with some sun coming out after the afternoon bus stop we see a pop-up shower or thunderstorm possible and then as we move into the weekend well we have a dry day Saturday but then we're going to see uh, some rain move in late in the day changes to snow Saturday night and then Sunday morning it all ends we get back to some sun Sunday afternoon Rhonda not leaving the house on Saturday, not looking out of the window. Uh, taking a look at the roads, the problems are not far from each other. If you travel in the westbound direction on the Davidson, this is right at I-75. The right lane is blocked there because of an accident. And then a little bit further north, I-75 in the northbound direction at 7 Mile. An accident there blocks the left lane. And as you can see, the backups are building. Yes, they are. Today on Live the D, Jason. Here's what's coming up. We have found a great place to dine in the D this weekend. They are serving up crispy fried chicken mm, yum. and mm. buttery biscuits. Oh. Yum. <laughs> Sounds Look delicious. at that sauce. Wait till oh. you see the biscuits with the butter right there. Oh, Add a little good. beer pong and you've got a new spicy spot downtown. Plus a, a movie reviewer, Greg Russell, talking about Avengers Endgame. Okay. No spoilers though, because I know a lot of people want to go out and see it. I know. Meanwhile, we want to remind you, Brandon's back on yeah. Monday and we cannot wait. So if you um, have any s snow accumulation, he's your man. Oh, because he had this no snow guarantee. He yeah. has to shovel if it's no, shovel Paul does. snow. I, I'm no, because this is Paul's last rules. day. No, he's Paul's pitching in to help Brandon's. Oh, you're going to help. <laughs> yeah. Have a great day, everybody, and a great weekend.